and welcome to another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson, the legal and government correspondent, and it's spring election season, and so we are doing candidate interviews. Today we have the city council race and candidate, well, uh, councilman uh, Jim Weber. Uh, Jim, which district are we talking about? District 4. District 4. All right, thank you for reminding me. So you have been the District 4 representative for how long? For four years. Okay. So is that two terms? or Two terms, right. All right. Exactly. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your qualifications and background that would uh, cause folks to maybe vote for you for a third term? Okay. Well, the kind of going in reverse order, the first thing is exactly what you said, is I've been on the city council for four years. That's the recent experience. When we lived in the town of Troy, I was uh, on the, the uh, park board, the plan commission, and then elected to the... Uh, Board of Supervisors. So I had kind of moved into Hudson with some some background and experience and, and, a, and a taste for uh, for municipal the, government. For municipal government, exactly. Okay. And uh, the opportunity came up, and uh, I decided to give it a try. I said, I've I've, I've got a lot of experience with from uh, working at 3M and then as a, a consultant with working with different parties, uh, ex seeing processes, examining processes, fixing processes, helping people uh, match, understand what the customer wants, and then figure out how to get that there. Look at all the process, places where things break down in the middle. Okay. And so I said, no, that's, that's a useful experience. So do you have a day job? Uh, day job or professional volunteers, I think. Okay. Uh, we, uh, my wife has been heavily involved in, uh, in uh, bike trails, river valley trails, and uh, developing safe bike and pedestrian trails and bike safety and okay. that. And uh, of course, I've uh, been along with her on that, on that journey for about 20 years. Uh, we used to go down to Madison uh, every year, at least once or twice a year, to get trained, to go to seminars, uh, just to get the background and, and meet people, see what how things are being done and, and developed a lot of a uh, lot of knowledge and experience that, uh, that we've been applying and, and trying to make that a, a, a bigger opportunity here in the in the St. Croix area. And you mentioned uh, daytime volunteer. I know that you're a fellow member of Hudson Daybreak Rotary. Right. Yeah. I you know I thought that's uh, I was thinking about that. So that was that's been a really neat experience to see all the uh, great volunteer efforts that we have in this area and the needs that drive these, these why, why we have to have the volunteers. And right. what, what, and, and a lot of it's uh, um, areas where things are breaking down mm -hmm. and, and people need help. Sure. So. Uh, Anything more about yourself or your qualifications that you want folks well, to know? Well, I, uh, sometimes I wonder if this is a qualification or not. I work for 3M. Uh, for 37 years, as I started as an engineer in manufacturing and in the laboratory, and then as a division level manager uh, for uh, uh, services that focused on customers primarily, uh, uh, quality, uh, cu customer service, technical service, those kinds of things. Where really, we were really focused on you know, sometimes a lot of it's fixing problems and understanding what the problem is and making sure there's a solution to that. So that's, that's where a lot of background and uh, spent a lot of time with suppliers looking at processes and, and, and why did things fail? And, okay. and then how do, we fi how do we keep that from, how do we fix the process so that doesn't fail? So you don't blame the person, so what's wrong with the process that that could happen? And then- So see, you see some similarities there between the 3M experience, customer service, and uh, serving on city council. There's a lot of constituent service. Oh well. yeah, ab absolutely. And I, and I think our, our whole, uh, city structure is based on what are providing service to the citizens in the community. So that's 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 why we exist. Okay. And so it's a. So you know, why do you want to serve on the on the city council then? Well, um, I've it, I've for always third term. <laughs> yeah, for third term, <laughs> we've always believed in giving back, and that's you know we took advantage. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who've made the world the way it is that allowed. Uh, me and my family to be successful. So we've always believed in giving back. I think now for the third term, I've had you know, the first year you kind of say, what is going on? You know, trying to understand 
how, they, how the whole thing operates, how the city council works, how the uh, different uh, uh, sub councils sub, uh, work, how the actual work gets done in public works and in the park and you know all these understanding how all these things fit together. And at this point, you know, I've got four years of experience. We've got some really big projects coming. And we've been doing, we've been working at some of these things, trying to understand the needs for, and we're going to talk about these things later, but for parking and for what do we do with the fire department, what's, what's happening with EMS, how do, we, how do we make sure that's what we want it to be. And uh, th there's a lot of solutions that we're working on. So we've, we've, we've gone through a lot of struggles. We've done through the studies. We've paid for people to come in and look at it and, and explain what the situation is, provide, provide us data, and, and some, some suggestions about how we might do that, where to look for opportunities. Okay. So that's, that's kind of, I said, okay, um, yeah, it's, I've still got another year or two to, uh, that, that, I can, that I can contribute. All right. Well, that's the why. So let's go to the what. What do you see as the most important issues to be addressed, you know, in the city council over the next two years? I think the, the first one is a, a revised growth plan to make sure that our comprehensive plan mm -hmm. uh, is updated and uh, is looking at the current model of the economy and uh, the current expectations that people have about where they want to live, what they want to, how they want it to be, what businesses want in terms of a, of a, uh, a place to have, have their people work, and so those are the kinds of make sure we're updated and that that we're looking and that we're looking out in the future. The second thing, um, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more at the at the end, but uh, is we need to be looking at long term funding for some of these major projects. We're we're talking about some really significant projects in the, you know, just the fire department alone. A new building is, and is what we're looking at, you know, mm -hmm. five million plus. So that's, that's big. Uh, redoing uh, uh, exit two Carmichael, the Carmichael interchange, redoing the 11th Street Bridge. Uh, those are all very large projects. And the Carmichael project, total dollar project is 25 million. That, and that's not, Hopefully not all going to be on the city that we're going to share that with the, with the uh, state. Hope so. <laughs> but uh, so there's some really large things out there. Uh, parking, one of the things we're, we're going to talk about is that's we've run out of places on the street. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at a building, uh, some kind of building. Is that the next option? I mean, that's the recommended option, one of the recommended options for us. So that's a, that's a big expense, too. So you just, you know, they're twenty the twenty thousand dollars per parking spot. Wow. So that's a uh, that's a, a big. One. I, I think maybe, and uh, as the more I think about it, is one of the most a uh, very critical issue for us is uh, supporting our new staff and leadership as they come on. As our we've had people working for us for a long time, and we're starting they're starting to retire, and we've experienced that. Uh, uh, Last year, uh, Marty Jensen is leaving. Denny, Dar Denny Darno left last year. Uh, we two, the year before, we, our sewer and water organization changed over and brought a new manager in. So we've got new people coming in that uh, we need to support. Uh, we've got new leadership. Uh, we're facing challenges from the, for keeping our new people as the, uh, you know, we're, we don't want to be a training ground for the cities. And that's that would be easy to happen. They can we're we're quite visible, and uh, the pay can be higher over there. So it's a it's an issue that we're going to have to figure out how do we deal with that particular okay. issue. And then, I think working more closely with the county, you know, we've had some things where that didn't go as well as they should have, and letters were exchanged, and uh, you know that's a, could have I th could have been handled in a in a better way. You know, you know, library funding, uh, joint facilities. Uh, the county's working on a transit plan. We need to be tied into that because we're obviously a destination for any transit plan. So that's uh, that's important to us. So. Okay. Did we cover them all? 
uh, yeah, yeah, I guess we're going to get into some individual some other ones. Specifics, right. um, uh, and always the top of mind is finances. You know, do you see any areas where the city could reduce spending without reducing services? You always think so, um, but as I, I look at it, I said I think we've done a pretty good job. We've combined management. You know, uh, we have a, a couple places where managers are now, or the supervisors or the or the superintendents are handling two positions, you know, that we, we've combined them, rolled them into, into two positions. And uh, that's, that's a, a pretty big cut. I think we'll see there are probably spot opportunities, but I think overall that our, our uh, services run pretty well. And I think they run pretty efficiently and they run pretty lean compared to, to other uh, cities. Uh, we're we're uh, we're pretty small in staff. We're uh, our taxes. I have to be careful about saying this one, but if you look at the whole state at all the municipalities, we're in the lower third of taxes. So we're we're running pretty efficiently. I think we do a. I think our staff just does a fabulous job. Uh, okay, so. Let's start with infrastructure. Is the city's plan for maintaining and improving the city's infrastructure sufficient? Why or why not? I'd say it's marginal, but and we're getting better, but we've got to make some more improvements. For example, we're looking at the at the sewer and water, so the, the entire system, and uh, what some of it is said to be a hundred years old, and uh, some of the uh, uh, water system, the fresh water system is inadequate. It was, it worked 50 years ago, but a four inch pipe is perhaps not adequate anymore. And we need a six or eight or 12 inch pipe. Mm -hmm. So we need to, we need to look at that entire system, see what condition it is and start prioritizing how we're going to rebuild that. And it's, that's, it's not unique to Hudson, but, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a problem a lot of cities are facing that uh, infrastructure is getting old. So, but we are looking at that. So we're starting those processes, but expect to see a lot of uh, challenges in, in those areas. Our uh, uh, street, the other, the other infrastructure thing that may, a lot of people see are streets. That's, uh, now we've been, been focusing on our main streets, the, the large arter arterial streets and mm -hmm. making sure those are good. And we're catching, we're kind of catching up with that. Um, we're not there yet, but uh, we're, we're getting better. Uh, Vine Street, Carmichael, we're looking at Carmichael now in the long term. But we need to be looking at all of our streets. You know, there's been some, as Sixth Street has been talked about for, I don't know, 10, 15 years that need, needs to be improved and hasn't been yet. So uh, we need to figure out how we're going to do that. And we just talked last night in the uh, public works meeting about uh, how to create a plan for all the streets in the city. And that's, that's on our agenda now for, for this fall, is to start that, that process. You mentioned we, and I don't know if we covered this in your qualifications, but which committees specifically have you been on uh, with the city council? Well, I've been on, uh, on public safety. I'm currently on public works. I'm on the ad hoc uh, committee for EMS. I've been on the uh, uh, River Channel Committee. I've been on the fire on the fire uh, committee. Okay. Just quite a few. Haven't been on the finance committee, but I attend the meetings, so mm -hmm. you always get exposed to it there. All right. But it, as far as that infrastructure, so your work on public works is giving you some background there, and that's. Um, where you you say we've we've done some improving, but we got more improvement to go yet. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, what do you think regarding annexation of land? Do you think the city of Hudson should continue uh, to annex land, or where does that uh, fit in? Uh, you mentioned earlier in one of the previous answers about a revised growth plan, but um, how do you see yeah, that's uh, that playing into the annexation issue? Yeah, a revised comprehensive plan comprehensive plan to decide, you know, part of that, that's a process that we really need to be examining. What do we want to be? You know, what is the, what is the future of Hudson? What is the, the goal of this, of this entity? Do we want to grow? Do we want to stay where we're at? 
And I, I think well, do we want to go backwards? Do you see us going back to uh, 7,000 people or 7,500, whatever it was, uh, 25 years ago? I would hope not. Okay. Because <laughs> we couldn't support the infrastructure that we have if we did that. Right. It would be very difficult. And that's one of the traps that, uh, that, that cities have gotten into, is that they, they grow and they expand to support that growth. And then if they, all of a sudden, they can't support it anymore, uh, infrastructure starts to fail. And, and uh, do you have the money, do you have the resources coming in? Do you have to keep growing in order to, to make that happen? It's a, it's a really tricky uh, path to walk. And there's a lot of thought get being given to, maybe you don't want to grow, you know, or maybe you need to grow more carefully. And I think that's, we're, uh, I, I, I'm fairly certain that there are growth opportunities that we're holding right now, because we've got some pretty big growth plans right now, with, particularly with the, uh, the uh, dog track expansion. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a very large one for us, so we want to make sure that that one goes well. But there are other things out there. We have to look at what resources we have available, particularly sewer and water. And those are the, when you talk about growth or expansion or annexing land, you're talking about extending those services. Right. And so those are, those are very important to, uh, to know what they're, they are. We know we're reaching sewer capacity. You know, where it's, that's, that's, we can see the end of sewer capacity. And water capacity, I think we're okay. But uh, sewer is a significant issue. And uh, how we, we need to look at how we're going to do that in order to, to support any, any growth. That would be part of that planning, that, that plan. You say, if we're going to grow, how are we going to grow, where are we going to grow, and what does it take to get us there? What's that going to cost? How are we going to pay for that? Will the expansion pay for that? You know, one of the things I wanted to say is, you know, we talk about annexing land is, is that in general, we do not annex, don't go out and say, we want that land. You know, we're going to act, bring it in the city. It, the landowners come to us and say, we want to become part of the city, and here's our plan of what we're going to do with that land. So that's, that's, that tends to be the driver for us. Uh, the perception, though, is like River Falls, that they're going towards Hudson, Hudson's making no moves towards them, and that River Falls is going out there. Um, and you're saying it's really not the case that River Falls is going out and annexing land. It's just that the surrounding landowners are getting approached for development, and then they're applying to the city. That's the way what generally drives it. And River Falls had a couple funky issues that there about how they did that, that that are in court right now. Mm -hmm. So we have to be considerate of our our neighbors in, in that area, in that respect. Okay. So. And, but I, you know, I, I think we're always looking at where would we grow, how would we grow. Uh, we're uh, our business park uh, up on the hill is is virtually full, and there's some opportunity in the in the uh, the uh, dog track expansion. But that's a different kind. We're looking at more of a business park as opposed to an industrial or to uh, to uh, uh, warehousing, which we have up up on top. So it's a uh, we need to we're looking at. That is being looked at to see where could we grow. Um, speaking of growth, what sort of redevelopment do you think ought to be taking place in Lakefront Park, if any, when it comes to redevelopment of yeah. that area? Well, I think Lakefront Park is our diamond. You know, it's, a, it's the attraction that we have besides being a, a city where people live. You know, it's a place to go, it's a place to be. They come up the river to be here. They drive to be here to go to our restaurants, and they go to they go down, and they walk down, down there. They uh, we have the, uh, the, uh, the the boat that departs down there. So it, there's there's just a lot of draw for that, and we need to dress that up. Um, I think there's you know, we've we have a plan in front of us, or it's virtually in front of us. We've seen the initial recommendations. And I, my belief would be that the, the first focus would be on the dike road, and we should start calling it dike the walkway or something, give it, a, give it a new name, it's no longer a road. But to dress the west end of that up, out by the beach, clean that up, make that attractive. Um, then uh, we utilize the edges of the uh, roadway. This is my, my wife pointed this out to me, she said, why can't we, you could, we could cantilever things off the, that, so we still don't, we still have the roadway, 
but you can have all different kinds of things. You could have businesses, you could have restaurants, you know, lots of little shops. Uh, you could make that a, a, an attractive place, another even more attractive to be. And then along with that, our, our, uh, our, our dockage is pretty poor. It does not uh, allow that uh, to, uh, we don't draw, can't draw a whole lot of traffic, we just don't have the space to, uh, to dock that, so, so to dock boats. So we need to, that's one thing would be part of that examination. And then the third piece of that is the, the trail, you know, the, the trail that we have lakefront, along lakefront there is very nice, but it doesn't go anywhere. And uh, particularly, uh, there's opportunities to attract bicyclists and, and uh, uh, runners, people who, who are going to go for more distance. Uh, we need we we can't get to I ninety four very easily. That's not that's not safe mm -hmm. to even get there or comfortable. So that's one thing we would need to look at. Um, the county has a, a bike and pedestrian plan that we could connect to, and that how we would get across uh, uh, the lake Lake Malu. How do you how do you effectively cross that safely? Cross that right. So. Um, we need that would be part of the, the thinking that we have to see what what is this going to look like so those are the kind of the, the three things you know, the length of it and then the specific focus that that helps feed downtown that uh, makes it more attractive a lot of people still they walk out there all the time even in the winter time I see people walking out the dike and back and you know, it's just part of the and my wife and I do that frequently not generally during the winter time but uh, Right. Uh, it's a it's a, a big summertime thing for us to do that. It was just make that even more attractive than it is. All right. Um, so what could be done about the parking issues in downtown Hudson? If we're going to be doing redevelopment at Lakefront and uh, try to attract more people, then what's going to be done about the parking issues in downtown? <coughs> well, some people say we have a walking issue, not a not a parking issue, but. Uh, I, I don't think that's true. Um, I, I look at w once we get off the main streets, we start parking, push parking, people parking out there, then you can't drive. You can't get two, th two cars very comfortably through 3rd uh, uh, Street north of Vine. That's, that's very uncomfortable when you go through there. So it's just not adequate. So we can't keep pushing our parking out to the, to the neighborhoods because they don't like it either. You know, who wants they, they want to be able to have their front uh, access as well. So I think the uh, the recommendations certainly, and we've we've had two different studies look at it. Uh, what what kinds of things we need to do? The first thing is is uh, modernize our our uh, current meter situ uh, situation, mm -hmm. and uh, that's we're starting to to look at that. We're getting bids on different s kinds of systems that would be more effective, more efficient. Our our meters are old; they're constantly in repair. It's not unusual to go downtown and find and have your meter not work. So and then so that means that somebody has to take care of that, that pulls them off from actually monitoring the meters. They have to we have people walking around still monitoring meters. That's not very effective in today's age. And coin operated versus yeah, uh, we, we credit can card. you know, you can do credit card. You know mm -hmm. you can you know, there's an app called Passport that uh, that I have on my phone that I use all the time. Uh, because I never have any change. I don't, I don't keep change anymore. I just you know, right. toss it in a jar or something, and so I never have change with me. But uh, we've done that, so that's, that's a possibility. But it's, uh, it's slow, and if you don't have the app on your phone, you've got to load the app. And mm -hmm. so there's, there's pros and cons to each. But oh, yeah. So modernize the meters. What else could we do about parking? Uh, we've uh, expanded uh, our areas that were striped, uh, we've striped some areas in order to make it more effective. Say, so, okay, y this is a parking space instead of unstriped areas where people were parking. Now it's, we've defined where the parking spaces are. So we can pick up a few cars that way. Uh, we have conversations with uh, some of the business owners about allowing parking. And some of them do after hours, uh, parking is allowed in their, in their spaces. Others are not. But those are, uh, those are only marginal gains for us. I think the, uh, the information is that a some kind of structure is uh, 
is the solution that we have, and, and that again, that's structure that's being another word for parking ramp. Yeah, I didn't want to use that word, but yeah, okay, a, a ramp. You know, whether uh, uh, how many, where it is, what size it is, are all being done. And there are some proposals that we're looking at. Um, I'm I'm encouraged that perhaps it will be a that we will have a, a public uh, private partnership, or maybe even a, you know that that would be involved in, in that so it's not strictly a city expense and responsibility so those, those are the kinds of things that we're looking at and, and we've got some things that are some things are happening to to try to move in those in those directions slow but uh, uh, this is not an easy issue to solve uh, saving the best for last of the specific issues and that is the EMS issue and uh, this has become <coughs> something that's quite a hot button issue over the last year and you've been on council long enough that every year there's something that occupies the the number one uh, generator of traffic I guess in city council <laughs> chambers um, so um, what do you see as uh, first of all is there a EMS problem and what is the solution uh, yes there is an EMS problem and I, I think uh, the the uh, first thing that we need to do is to look at this as a public service. And we sort of treat it as a semi-economic model, you know, that it should make money or it should pay for itself. And I think the, the data is that it, that will probably never happen. Mm -hmm. It will never pay for itself. So let's just be honest about it, right? Yeah, yeah, because Medicaid pays a third of the cost of what it costs us to make a run. Medicaid pays one third. Uh, Medi Medicare pays about 60, 70 percent of what it costs. So every one of those runs, which is, uh, and those, that's right now the 60 percent of the runs. Medicaid and Medicare, is that like majority of the runs? 60 percent. Okay. So, so we're losing money on 60 percent of our runs. And uh, that's a that's that's untenable. I don't I don't think a, a business could actually make that work. I don't I don't think you, you could have a for profit business with those kinds of those kinds of numbers. Your your cost to people who do not have to private insurance or to people who who are not Medicare or Medicaid pa patients would be tremendous. So there's going to be some degree of subsidization. It's I a matter of how much and where from where, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, the, the, the year and a half of negotiations that we went through and the, that was just did not work well, did not make the city look good. The whole thing just didn't work well for us. And uh, our, our EMS staff lost faith in us. Mm -hmm. you know, they really said, do, we, do you guys really want us? Do you really respect us? You know, that, that, came, that message has come through loud and clear. I'm on the ad hoc committee for the ad hoc EMS committee, which is looking so it's another group trying to help uh, both the EMS Commission and the Council and the, and the Public Safety Committee make the, the best possible decisions that we can to, to, uh, to rebuild this. We think uh, that the city, that the residents of the city want this to stay local. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we want local management uh, of, this, of this system. So it's on, that was one of the issues is that we were losing, we would lose control of the way that was being set up. We would have no real say in how that was done. So you're a proponent of local control over a basic service like I that. I am, okay. absolutely. Now we have to, we're, what we're looking at though is more and more of these, we have to be using professionals, full-time professionals. Our volunteers are professionals, but they're not full-time. So we need more full-time people, and that's the direction we're going. At it. Uh, the term option three has, has been bandied about as one of the five options that, uh, that, was, that people looked at uh, prior, to, or, uh, prior to this process. And that's a staffing option. Yeah, how we, how we staff, yes. And are you in favor of staffing option three? Um, yes, I am, but I think we're, we're going too slow. It's, uh, it's okay. a five-year plan. And I don't think we have five years to to make that work. We're going. We'll find out this year. Okay. You know about, about can is this going to work? And we're we're struggling as we make a switch from 
from uh, uh, full-time to, to more full-time paramedics. Most of our paramedics are full-time, but we're going to increase that number. We're changing the, the, the structure, the style, and uh, people no longer, if, you, if you're on the schedule, um, you're required to be at the station as opposed to being able to be home and respond to calls. So that's a, it's a shift right. in that. And, and we've had some limitations uh, in the number of hours that people can work has made it difficult to, uh, to staff. So we're, strug we're working through that right now. So okay. how, do, how, do we, how do we make this transition to this model and we make it f safely and effectively, not lose the volunteers that we have? I think that's the, the, the issue is how do we build, and I had this, I had this written out somewhere. <laughs> oh, so yeah, we need to develop a model that uses, that uses full-time professionals so that we're basically staffed and can, can do all the things we want to, but not lose the volunteers who are the backbone of the system and allow us to do other things, to, to have an expanded operation, to have a third ambulance available when we need it. Mm -hmm. uh, those, those kinds of things, to uh, uh, staff uh, when we have big events when we have booster days. Right. You know, we, we need more help than in those, those time periods. So we want, we don't, I, to me, we don't want to lose sight of that. You know, that's, that's been the backbone of the, of this, of the system and of, uh, of EMS. So okay. we, want to, we want to maintain that and use the professionals and, and the volunteers together. That's, it's not, e not an easy task. Right. I think that's, uh, to, to me, that's, that's the dream that uh, that we have okay well we've got just a little bit of time left but what other issues do you feel the council should address this is kind of the catch-all if we haven't specifically hit an issue like parking ems and redevelopment annexation infrastructure that uh, you wanted to address um, yeah i think uh, and I, I made reference to the comprehensive plan which is kind of the guide this is the guide for us um, and i coming from 3m uh, we ex I experienced those often, frequent, and painfully, but uh, they are important mm -hmm. because it's, it, it, to me, and 3M used it as a five-year plan, but it mm -hmm. didn't stay constant. It, you, were able, right. you, you changed it as the economic situation changed, as the business situation changed, your plan would change, so you had to re-examine re it. But the important thing, and maybe you did that every two years, you look at your five-year plan, Every year, you look at your, what are, what, are, what are our goals and objectives? Every department has right. to look at what their goals and objectives are, and they have to then come together, and all departments have to say, this is how we're working together. You know, this, here's our plans, and here's how, we, here's how we fit, and you say, oh, okay. Well, that's not what we were planning on. You know, IT has to know what's going on and, and what the police department's doing, and, and it, inc it includes the, the, you know, the, the fire department, EMS, uh, public Getting works. everybody on the same page. Absolutely. Okay. And then you have to say, okay, here are our objectives, and here's how, we're, here's how we're going to meet the objectives to support the comprehensive plan. Okay. And th that's what you work to, and that's what we ought to be held accountable for. And it includes the council. And we, <laughs> we really need to have that same thing, because sometimes we just, seems like we just go from Reacting. Reacting from one, sometimes just one fire from another to another. You know, mm -hmm. We have, some of, some of it's planned. We, a lot of what we do is planned, but there are times when we think, oh, that was an issue that perhaps we could have avoided. We didn't, we weren't looking far enough down the road. Right. But I, I, and I think the human resource area is certainly one that the council has to uh, address uh, very strongly. Okay. I believe we need to work more closely with the county the uh, you know, the uh, library funding was an issue that we spent time in the council on, um, and it w I didn't think it was positive. Uh, right. It wasn't positive time. Um, w no, we didn't get any resolution that was that was beneficial. The uh, county is working on a transit plan. I mentioned that's I, I think you know we're a destination, so any transit plan we need to be totally looking at it and involved and say, yeah, this is helpful. Here's how we work with you on this. Um, the county has a lot of land up there and the uh, Carmichael and Vine. It would be very useful for us to have, for the city to have facilities. It's already off the tax rolls. 
Right. Don't take any more land off the tax rolls. It, we can, if we can figure out how to work with them jointly on, on some of these things, we need to do that. We need to make, make a, more of an effort there. The, uh, I, I've mentioned human resources a couple times that uh, the pressures we face from the job opportunities across, across the, the river. The, and and, and I, this is, I, I probably read this more than I experienced it. I wasn't my generation. So I took a job with 3M when I was there 37 years. You know, mm -hmm. So, and if I probably, in my first five years, I looked a couple times at, because I said, well, where am I going? You know, how's, what's it like? And then, and then after that, so we got on, got on the plan and said, okay, here's, here's where I'm going. This is how I'm, I'm moving. The, the current generation, I am told, and, and read, and is, doesn't quite think that way. They move around more. So we need to look at how, do we, how are we going to make stabilize that. We're, our people right. are retiring. We have some really good people, but like I said, we've lost some good people, losing some good people. We have to replace them, and we have to make sure that we can keep them. So we have to, that's a, a human resource area that, uh, that we just started to address a little bit this year in looking at, at, uh, at salaries and, and who we were competing with. I mean, we're not competing, we're not competing necessarily with River Falls or New Richmond. We're competing with Woodbury, <laughs> we're competing with Oakdale, we're competing with anybody in the, in right. the eastern half of the cities, for sure. 15 minutes and they can be in a different job. Right. So that's uh, that's something, and that, that's been a struggle challenge. with it. Yeah, it's been a uh, challenge with EMS. EMS is that's, has a resource issue nationwide. So uh, that's that's here in the cities. There's, there's a resource issue, so people are paying more. Uh, Alina <laughs> pays a five thousand dollar bonus for a paramedic. It's a sign. You know, it's, and I'm sure it's I'm sure it's graduated over time. You have right. to be there, but uh, wow, that's that's hard to compete with. That's really attractive. Yeah. So we have to say, how do we, how do we stay, how do we make ourselves attractive to? So stabilize our personnel and retain and attract right. and retrain good people. Yeah. And a, a, a favorite of mine, um, and uh, certainly a favorite of, of my wife's as well, is that trails, sidewalks need to go somewhere. They need to be friendly to, to, to uh, families. We need to just make it easier for people to not use their cars. You know, maybe that's a 5% solution to parking downtown. Mm -hmm. you know, I see a lot of people walking down Vine Street during booster days. You know, they, they say, I'm not even going to drive down there. I can't possibly find a, find a spot. But um, just make it safer and make, uh, make sure things are connected, that we're destination oriented. Safer for yeah. alternative transportation. The, uh, right. I know that the uh, <coughs> Hudson School District is looking at uh, safe routes to school. As a as a project, and uh, my wife is involved with that. We need to make sure that we're on board with that, and that we support that in, in whatever way we can. Okay. So, and it may include some. Maybe we have to spend some money. Maybe we need some new sidewalks. Maybe we need to look at pathways. We need, how do we maintain those pathways? You know, so, those are all those things do add expense. But if you're going to have them, and let's use them. Let's not set up a situation where they're not usable. Exactly. All right. Did we cut we cut uh, cut you off there, or are you? No, I I think that uh, that pretty well covers the very the good least, the, the current things. And I, I certainly appreciate the opportunity to be here, Jamie. Appreciate you know you do a it's just you're easy to uh, <laughs> talk with, so I appreciate that. Absolutely. And uh, the opportunity to serve has been been phenomenal. I love the you know. People tell me when I'm doing good and tell me when I'm doing bad. You know, <laughs> so right? You're getting good you're feedback, and uh, well, thank you for running and uh, being willing to serve. And you want to try and put that experience to use for a third term. I wish you luck with that, and just remind our viewers to keep watching and uh, keep informed about uh, who's running the the race. Uh, the election itself is actually April third. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. Very yeah. good. And there. Are, we're going to, there, there will be a primary for some of the other state offices, but I don't, there's no primary relative to, uh, to uh, the uh, city offices. But whatever they do, vote. They got to vote. You know, I don't, even if you vote and against me, this is me, fourth district that we're talking about? Fourth district. We run, it runs basically from Vine Street to the dog track, from Grandview to Carmichael. It's kind of a, a, a long rectangle that goes all the way, cuts across most of the city. Okay. And uh, 
gets us up on the hill. And uh, so, all right, very good. Thank okay. you for your time, Jim. And again, thanks for running. Oh, and thank, thank you, you for watching another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal.